seen some of the other videos where I'm servicing this bike and I've done the valve clearances, I've done spark plugs and all that kind of thing. But one important thing to do, especially after you know doing the other work, is to balance the carbs. Now I've got one of these old manometers. I've had this for about 30 years. It uses mercury and the way that it works is you're supposed to balance the carbs by balancing how much mercury is sucked up these pipes. Problem that I've got, I've realised that in lending it out, moving or whatever, there isn't actually enough mercury in this now for all four columns to register properly. However, there is enough so that I can do one column. Now you might think, you've got a four cylinder bike, how are you going to use one column? Well, the way that you do it is whether you're using this or you were using a single dial gauge, is you go and get one of these distributor blocks that's really for fish tank air supply. It has to have four on one end and one off the other, and the four have to have taps with them. It's not very expensive, about three pounds. Nothing, you know, worth talking about. And instead of using the hoses to connect to all four of these, you actually use the hoses or to connect to the carbs and you connect them to this block and you only connect one of these to the column that I'm going to use or to a dial gauge yeah you only need one dial gauge one of the big advantages of this especially if you're using a dial gauge you don't need to worry about calibrating the dial gauges to each other because you're using the same one and even with a mercury manometer you might notice the connectors are at different heights down here so they never I don't think 100% right just using one column means you don't need to worry if there's any difference there either now this kit when I got it it had the hoses and it also came with adapters these you actually screw in the throat of the carb I'll show you that in a little bit and you screw these in so you can connect the hoses to them now the way this works out is on a bike like this, it has four carbs, one of them is the master carb. Now on this bike, it's the number three. What that really means is there's no adjuster screw for it. That's the one that is directly affected by the throttle. But the bar that controls the other ones, there's an adjuster so you can change the way they open in regard to the main one. Perhaps make more sense when you see me get a little bit further into the job. Right, so that's the manometer. That's the distribution block. This is gonna be a laugh because I've only got the short little takeoff things. You could do with longer ones on a bike like this because where the uh, takeoffs are are really right underneath the carbs, but I'll, I'll try and show you that in a minute. Let's get on with it. So the screws for the takeoff are actually there. One there, one, uh, get my head in the right place. Oh well, perhaps you can see it, I can't at the moment from where I am. Now this one is the vacuum takeoff for the fuel line. So you actually just clip that off and you use the, uh, the place where it's taken off anyway. So I've got to get these out, which are a four mil Allen and get the adapters in. So as you can see, it's gonna be a bit of a struggle. I've got the adapters in and I've taken off the tube from the uh, vacuum for the fuel tap. So now what I've got to do is put the hoses on. Now they do have like a little restrictor in them now, I'll be honest, I can never remember where that's supposed to go. That end or this end, I don't think it really matters. I'm going to put it at this end. It's a little hole in the middle so that the tube actually has like a damper in it. You might have seen getting those uh, little adapters in might be a bit of a challenge, especially as I haven't got the longer ones that you got, can get. These ones are only very short. What you 
basically do is you join all four pipes that come from the carbs to a distribution block and the distribution block to the gauge so if you've got a single dial gauge this would work for that because you just set them all to the same it doesn't matter whether it says 900 or 2 you just set them to the same that's the way that this works with a manometer or with a dial gauge so what I can do is I know that number 3 is the master one so when I've got the engine running I open number 3 and I check on my gauge whereabouts the mercury is getting to on the column that's connected here once I've done that I close number 3 and open number 4 nearest one adjust that using the screw to do exactly get to the same position once I've done that I go back check number 3 again and if they're both the same still then I know I've done that one okay the next one I do will be number two I now adjust that one to the same position on either the dial gauge or on my case on the manometer once I've got that at the same close it off open number three again are they both at the same if they are you've done that one then look where it is and then do number one once I've done number one close that off check it against the value I've got for number three and if they're all the same Bob's your uncle usually you have to go through this two or three times it doesn't sort of magically fit the same it's the same whether you've got four columns I've always found in the past that even when you have four columns you'd always tend to have one that was an outlier you dial that one in then you do it again another one would be an outlier and you never got them exactly 100 percent on with this at least you know you're using exactly the same column or the same gauge for each one you don't need to worry about any calibration there so that's the way i'm doing my synchronization on this particular fire blade and to be honest the way this is working out i'll probably use this method all the time in the future uh, I was looking at buying another manometer, but uh, maybe I can just save that expense. carbs balance now and to be honest when you just crack in the throttle it seems a lot crisper I can't wait to get out and ride this but it's sort of minus two out there I think at the moment so that's not going to happen for a while I actually didn't set off to do the carb balancing the way that I've ended up doing it 
I had intended to just use my four column manometer and it was only when I came to use it, I realized that there was a problem and I've lent that out to many, many people. So who knows when that came out? Let's hope that whoever spilled some of the mercury is safe. Anyway, it worked to treat. And as I say, I saw somebody else do it that way with a dial gauge and for a dial one, which you're always worried about the calibration, that would be absolutely perfect. Anyway, that's that job done. I'll be on to a few other jobs soon. If you enjoyed this project or if you want to follow along with the bright projects that we've got and the car and the van stuff that we're doing, why not subscribe? But anyway, I do hope you enjoyed it. You take care.